I'm Meg. Welcome to Plant Fit Meg. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I hope you'll take a look around at some other videos while you're here. I make videos about healthy weight loss, simple plant-based recipes, and living a healthy lifestyle. In today's video, I thought it'd be fun to share some of my favorite holiday recipes and some of my favorite recipes that I like to enjoy during the winter season when it's cold outside and I want something nice and warm and comforting. I'll be sharing my top five favorites along with a bonus and I'll be sharing breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. If you like this video and videos like this, remember to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel below if you haven't already and you want to see more from me. And with that, let's jump right in to the top five list, which is actually a top six list because of the bonus and the recipes. The first favorite I want to talk about is French toast. And I don't typically eat a lot of French toast year round. But for some reason, during the winter season and during the holiday time, I love having French toast. And my husband Chris and my son Riordan absolutely love French toast. They would eat it every day if they could. So we love to make it together and uh, enjoy it together. We'll often enjoy it for breakfast along with some berries or um, some chopped up banana or other fruit and top it with some maple syrup or date syrup or even my chocolate date sauce or even just to simplify it even further, having it topped with some applesauce or some jam. We also like to have this meal as breakfast for dinner or even as sort of a dessert. It doesn't have the traditional eggy sort of taste that French toast has, but it gives that similar vibe and we really, really enjoy this recipe. Today we're using the Organic Sprouted Power Multigrain Sprouted Wheat Bread for our French toast. And I have preheated our Cuisinart Griddler to 350 on the griddler setting. I'm adding two tablespoons of oat flour to my dish here, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of ground flaxseed, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a couple of pinches of nutmeg, one cup of plant milk, I'm using soy today, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So I'll whisk that together until it's blended. Then I'll let it sit for a few minutes just for the mixture to thicken a little bit with the flaxseed. All right, it's been about three minutes, so I'm just going to give it another quick whisk. All right, our French toast has been cooking for about five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip. And the Cuisinart Griddler is great because it's nonstick. I don't have to use any oil. My cameraman's in the way, <laughs> which makes it a little awkward, but otherwise. Oh, and the pieces are sticking together. That's all right. There we go. So crispy. Yum. All right. One more. Here we go. All right. We're going to let those cook for another few minutes and then they'll be all done and ready to enjoy. I'm going to add some berries on top. Sometimes I like to put uh, applesauce or date syrup over the top as well. Today I'm going classic with maple syrup. 
In the editing process of this video, I realized that if I included all of the recipes, this video would be extremely long. So I decided to include the recipes that are new. So I'll have full walkthroughs of any new recipes and any recipes that are already on the channel, I will just link to in the description box and I'll also add cards so you can check those out as well. As always, there are printable recipes available on my website. They'll be linked in the description box below. Next up is my potato leek soup. And I love all sorts of different types of soup during the winter season. I like to play around and just kind of throw ingredients together and play with it. But my potato leek soup, there's something really special about that recipe that I just really love this time of year. It's warming, comforting, and for some reason, it just reminds me of the holidays. We like to throw greens into it to make it a little more festive and add some more nutrition to it as well. It's nice to add lentils or chickpeas to this one as well. And it's just super delicious. Absolutely love this one. Next is my sweet potato chili. And similarly to soups, I absolutely love chili. It's so delicious and warming, but there's something really lovely about the sweet potato chili. The sweet potato adds this element of sweetness that's really yummy. And then with the spiciness of the chili powder and the other spices in the recipe are just really delicious. I love to have the sweet potato chili over grains or greens or both and it's just absolutely delicious. I love making big batches of soups or chili to have on hand. It takes a little bit of prep work to get it together but once it's ready then there's a big batch for leftovers that I can put in the fridge or store in the freezer for later. Next up is my shepherd's pie recipe. I have always loved shepherd's pie and when I went vegan I wasn't too sure how I was going to come up with a shepherd's pie that would be vegan and that would work. And after playing around with it for a while, I came up with a recipe and it takes a little bit of time to put together, but it's very simple and very easy to put together. It combines two of my favorite recipes that I use separately, even when I'm not making shepherd's pie. And that is my mashed potatoes and my gravy recipe. And I actually have two mashed potato recipes, one with greens and one without. So I usually add greens to my mashed potatoes and to my shepherd's pie when I'm making the dish for my little family, for the three of us. But if we are bringing the dish over to someone else's house for an event or a gathering, then I tend to leave the greens out um, so that it's a little bit more welcoming for the omnivore crowd and we've gotten great reviews from omnivores for this one. I also tried this recipe with the Well Your World gravy mix, their mushroom gravy mix, and that worked out really well too. So that's another option if you happen to have the Well Your World mix on hand. Next up is my baked pancake recipe. And I'm not really sure what to call this. Chris likes to call it the giant pancake or the epic pancake. Riordan likes to call it the pancake pizza because he tends to just pick it up with his hands and eat it <laughs> like that. Um, but it's a baked pancake. It's a sheet pan pancake and it's absolutely delicious. Sheet pan pancakes are just so brilliant. Instead of having to pour batter for each individual pancake and flip them. You just pour all your batter out onto your baking sheet that's lined with a silicone baking mat or parchment paper, bake it up and it's all done. And then you can just cut it up into slices and serve it. It's great for a big crowd. You could even make two at once if you're serving um, a, a big group of people and it's super delicious. So yummy, a favorite. This one we have had for breakfast. We also do the breakfast for dinner with this recipe. And we've also had it for dessert. Riordan refers to it as cake as well. Somehow he calls it pizza and cake. It's pretty silly, but he was saying that he wanted to put a candle in it for his next birthday. So we shall see if he 
changes his mind on that or if he decides that he wants to have a giant baked pancake for his cake, for his dessert, for his birthday. All right, I'm starting out by adding three cups of plant milk to a medium-sized bowl. I'm using soy milk today, but you can use any plant milk you like. We have also used almond milk and that works really well. And I'm adding one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Give that a little mix. And I'll just set that aside while I get the other ingredients together. This is going to be kind of like a vegan buttermilk substitute. So it's going to help make the pancakes nice and fluffy and really delicious. I'm adding three cups of flour to my large bowl here. I'm using whole wheat flour today, but I've also used oat flour for this recipe or a mix. And either way, it seems to be quite forgiving and it works well and one tablespoon of baking powder. I'm just gonna whisk that together. Here's our medium mixing bowl back with the milk and apple cider vinegar in it. I'm going to add half a cup of applesauce and one tablespoon of vanilla. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. All right, I have my large bowl back with the flour and baking powder in it. I'm going to add my wet ingredients into my dry. I'm lining my baking sheet with a silicone baking mat. You can also use parchment paper and that works really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my mixture to the baking tray. I will add the fruit, but I'll let it bake for a few minutes first. If you add the berries right away, they will actually sink to the bottom of the pancakes. So I bake them for about five minutes or so first, and then add the berries. I'm just gonna smooth it out slightly here. All right, I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 425 for about five minutes, and then I'll add the berries. I like to use one cup each of fresh blueberries and raspberries, but I don't always have fresh berries on hand. However, I do always have frozen berries in the freezer. So I have this triple berry blend from Costco, and it's a mix of blueberries, raspberries and blackberries. And so I'm going to use two cups of this berry mix for the recipe today. I'm just going to defrost the berries before I add them to the batter. All right, so this is what the baked pancake looks like after about five minutes. I'm just going to add my berries over the top. So I'm just going to gently tap the berries into the batter. So I'm going to put that back in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until it is lightly golden brown. And here's the finished giant berry pancake. Very exciting. Very much looking forward to digging into this. Chris and Riordan are also very excited. So we're going to enjoy this. And I hope you enjoy it too if you give it a go. And my bonus recipe is chocolate peanut butter brownies. Who doesn't love brownies? I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who don't like brownies, but I love chocolate. I love peanut butter. I love to mix them together and combining chocolate and peanut butter for this chocolate peanut butter brownie recipe is super delicious. It's an easy one to make and it's a family favorite for sure. I'm starting off with two cups of whole wheat flour, a quarter cup of cocoa powder, and one teaspoon of baking powder. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk that up quickly. Now I'm going to add my wet ingredients directly into the dry. You could also put your wet ingredients into a smaller bowl, mix it up first, and then add the wet ingredients to the dry. But my peanut butter is quite liquidy, so I think everything will incorporate quite well just putting everything into one bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way, but you choose your own adventure if you decide to give these a try. I'm adding one cup of plant milk. Today I'm using almond milk, but we have also used soy milk for this recipe and either way works well. 
half a cup of peanut butter. half a cup of applesauce, a quarter cup of maple syrup, and one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a mix. Once everything is mostly incorporated, I'll add my chocolate chips. I'm adding about a quarter cup of chocolate chips and I've also left a few extra chocolate chips aside for putting on the top of the brownies. All right, all mixed and ready to put into our brownie pan. I've already prepared my baking dish here. It's just a glass um, Pyrex dish and I've crinkled up some parchment paper as you guys suggested in the comments of one of my videos. And I also like to use these clothes pegs just to keep the parchment paper down while I get the batter in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my batter. It's quite thick. It smells so good. Try to get as much of the batter off as possible. It's a little sticky. Now I'm just going to go ahead and smooth it out so that it fills the entire dish. All right, and once it's all smoothed out, you can either go ahead and bake it right away, just as is. Today I'm going to add a few little extras over the top. So I'm going to add a few extra chocolate chips and some crushed walnuts as well. Also, if you're curious about measurements for these extra toppings, it's about a tablespoon each of the chocolate chips and the crushed walnuts. You could also add crushed pecans over the top and that would be really delicious as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the oven. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees and I'm gonna put it in between 25 and 35 minutes until a toothpick goes in and comes out nice and clean. So here are the finished brownies. I'm going to wait for them to cool completely and then cut them into squares. Thumbs up? Yeah. One thumb up or two thumbs up? You're trying to do two. You're trying to do two? <laughs> so they're really yummy? Great. So I hope you really enjoyed my top five with a bonus recipe list of my favorite holiday meals and my favorite meals to have in the winter time. I'd love to hear what your favorite meals are this time of year and what kind of recipes you've been testing or enjoying lately. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to have a chat with you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.